All right, so I'm getting pretty tired of manually building and tediously publishing my Maui application. So in this demo, we're gonna have just a boilerplate Maui application, and we're gonna go through all of the steps and different processes related to CICD topics for a Maui application. And there's a lot of topics here. So we're gonna go through things like publishing, of course, which is where it all begins, signing, auto updates, auto versioning, etc. And we're gonna be doing this in a GitHub Actions pipeline because in my opinion, if we can get this working in GitHub Actions, it's gonna be pretty easy to take our concepts and apply them in other pipeline solutions like Azure Pipelines and unfortunately Jenkins, if you're working with Jenkins. So that being said, let's hop right in. We're first gonna cover publishing. So actually getting an MSIX for our Maui application that we can install. So as I mentioned, we have just a boilerplate Maui application. So we're starting from a clean slate here. So we're gonna be doing GitHub Actions as we mentioned. So let's switch over to uh, folder view. So we can add a new folder at the root of our GitHub repository. And this is going to contain our GitHub actions workflow. So this is going to be called dot GitHub. And we're going to need another folder in here for workflows. And let's define our first workflow. So this is going to be a YAML file. Well, let's call this deploy dot YML. All right. So the first thing we have to do is give our workflow a name. So we'll simply name ours deploy because that's what we're doing here. And then we have to tell our GitHub workflow when it should trigger. So we do that by setting the on property and we just want to trigger ours whenever we push to the master branch. So this might change depending on how our workflow evolved, but for testing right now, we're just going to do pushes to master. And with that metadata, we can now start getting into what our job actually does. So we can define our jobs and we're just going to name our main job build. We're only going to have one job. So this really doesn't matter in this context. We are going to run this on windows. So, at least for building a Maui Windows application, I feel like it's a good idea to use Windows and not take risks with other platforms. I'm not even sure it would work on other platforms. Mac OS, maybe, I haven't actually tried. Linux, probably not a chance, not too sure. But just to be safe, let's stick to Windows. Now in this job, we can start defining our steps. So this is the good stuff. This is what our workflow actually does. So the first thing we have to do is check out our code from GitHub. But in order to build our Maui application, of course, we're going to need .NET. So let's install .NET within this workflow. So we're going to set up .NET using the built-in action for that. And we also want to specify .NET version 8 because that is what our Maui application is using. So setting up .NET is pretty traditional for building a .NET application in a pipeline. But for Maui, we also have to install the .NET Maui workload. And that's gonna give our GitHub action all the capabilities it needs to build and publish a Maui app. So let's do that. Let's do a .NET workload install Maui. So we should have everything we need now. Let's get into the fun part. So first we need to do a .NET restore so that we install packages for our Maui application. So let's run that. And I'm kind of in a mono repo right now. So I don't wanna do .NET restore on all of these apps. I only want to do it for the app that we're trying to deploy. So for this step, I'm going to specify a working directory of continuous deployment. So that's the folder containing the project that we want to build and deploy. Now that we have packages, we can do a .NET build, but we also want to specify the configuration as release because we really want to get a production build out of this. And we also want to specify the framework as Windows. So we don't want to build all of the iOS or Android builds as well, because we're really just focusing on .NET Maui Windows CICD here. And similar to .NET Restore, we also wanna set the working directory to our single project. Now, the next step we are gonna throw in now, and that is test. So same kind of thing as building, except this is gonna be our test step, and we're gonna run .NET test. Okay, I have no idea why I called out the .NET test step here. We definitely don't need it because right now we don't have any tests and our project isn't even a test project anyways, so feel free to skip this step. And finally, now that we have our app built and tested, we can get to publishing it. So we wanna do a .NET publish, same flags as building and testing, so release configuration, targeting Windows only for our single project here. But we also want to specify this p generate appx package on build as true so that we get an MSIX for our Maui application without having to set up some sort of other .NET project that builds our MSIX for us. So this simplifies things greatly. And the MSIX installer is the most important part arguably here. So by now our application is published 
And now we want to upload our MSIX as an artifact to our pipeline. So we're going to have one last step here for uploading our artifact. We're going to give our artifact a name of build, and then we have to point to the path of our artifact. So this part is a little bit tricky because we have to figure out what that path is. So a quick way to find it is just doing a .NET publish locally. It's also good to just test these steps locally before running them in the pipeline because you get much quicker feedback as we'll see here. So here we go, we get the path to our MSIX output here. So we can reference that. So it's in the continuous deployment folder and then bin release. We get our Windows .NET 8 framework specifier, the Win10 x64 platform, the app packages folder. And then we get a folder for our app name and version as well as our MSIX, which is our app name version and platform. So these values can change depending on the build especially the version. So we don't necessarily want to hard code these here. And luckily with this upload artifact action, we can do globs here. So in this case, we'll just grab all of the MSIX items in our published folder, which should be just this single MSIX that will get uploaded as an artifact. But we got all the steps. We're setting up .NET, installing the Malia workload, restoring, building, testing, publishing, and uploading our MSIX. So with that being said, moment of truth, let's test it. So commit our workflow, push up these changes. Here we go, workflow is running, off to a good start. Here we go, yay, build was successful. So our MSIX was uploaded successfully. If we head over to the summary tab, we see our build, this is what we named our artifact. So if we download this, so we have a zip and this zip contains our MSIX. So let's open this, we'll have to extract it. Here's our build folder. And we got our MSIX. So let's open this and begin installing. And we'll see that we can't actually install it because we haven't gotten into signing our application and verifying the certificate. So we're not gonna get into signing here because that's actually a pretty tricky topic. So we're gonna save that for next time. This is a good stopping point, I think. We also have other topics to get into such as automatic versioning and auto updates, which are fun. And these are actually all topics that I've explored and gone into in member live streams. So if you're interested in becoming a member for early access to topics, consider checking that out. But regardless, we are going to be covering these other CICD topics in upcoming videos very soon. But for now, hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own project to build, test, and publish your Maui application in a CICD pipeline.